Well, 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 well. Saturday, September 30th, it's noon Eastern time. I'm Bob Harris. This is the Football Diehards YouTube channel. It's time for our weekly Ask Me Anything session. Week four style, old school, solo edition. Get all your questions uh, through the course of the uh, next hour and uh, hopefully have a little bit of room to breathe the sort of room. You know how I like to do it. I like to talk them through a little bit. Before we get to that, first, footballdiehards.com is the website. We appreciate you joining us here on the YouTube channel every Saturday at this time, also on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our On the Hot Seat live streams. Had a great one this past week. My friend Lindsey Rhodes uh, from SiriusXM and uh, formerly from NFL Network and DirecTV. She did a great job. We talked through many, many things. Still some good information in there, so go check that out if you get a chance. Also, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You know how to do that. And then hit the like button. I'll hit the break the seal on the dislikes so everyone can feel free to jump in and hammer me with that. Uh, what else we got? Did I mention it's the last day of September? Holy cow, what the hell happened? It's October. Uh, tomorrow is October. And I'm told that's when everything in the NFL reverts to full normalcy. Of course, I'm told that by me, and sometimes I'm not right. Um, we're hoping to gain a little more, a little more, uh, a little less volatility. I guess that's the thing. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Troy. Hi, hey, Pedro. How you doing, man? Uh, Steve Lindor, good to see you. Ed A. Scott Kobe, hey, how you doing? Pat, Andrea, good to see you this morning. Jesse Cedillo, good to see you. Brian Larkin, I see all the questions starting to come in. I'll get to those in a moment. Let's just set the table on a couple of newsy type things that are going on. Saquon Barkley, now a game time decision. Hi, JR. Uh, game time decision, Brian Dayball announced this morning. Uh, so we'll have to deal with that. I'm going into Monday night. I don't know why you'd want to deal with that. But if you want to deal with that, you're going to have to deal with that. Matt Burita would be a fallback. Maybe Zach Charbonnet. I don't know. He's probably not available. He might be on your roster. Uh, Andrew Thomas, the offensive tackle, also out in that game, as you would expect. The Seahawks have not put out their injury report, but expect DK Metcalf to not be on it. Otherwise, uh, you know, some, you know, the usual things right now. Austin Eckler, we kind of knew this was coming. Uh, they have a week five bye. He will not play. Talked this week a little bit. Uh, he's listed as doubtful. Talked a little bit about this week about, you know, running, how he's fine running a straight line, but cutting is not a thing. He was talking about running curves. And, and this is kind of the progression you hear about uh, when you talk to players or when you listen to them or if you follow it closely. You know, the straight line running is first, then a little curved running, gentle curves, and then cutting. So he's not to the cutting portion of our program at this point, which is not good for uh, game day stuff. Uh, Deshaun Watson says he's going to play. He's his question with a shoulder injury. Anthony Richardson fully cleared. <clears throat> Brian Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk, Brian Ayuk, what the hell did that come from? Brandon Ayuk fully cleared uh, to practice without the non-contact jersey, I think last day, two days of the we, Debo Samuel, though, questionable. Juwan Jennings uh, is not going to play. He's doubtful. So, uh, Derek Carr got on the practice field Friday. He might get on the field this week. We'll have to see. Probably a game time decision coming. He's questionable. Jimmy Garoppolo in the concussion protocol. Not yet cleared. Uh, maybe get cleared today. He's kind of been ramping it up. You can see the progression going. So, <clears throat> some good news there. I know there'll be some questions about Alvin Kamara today. We'll answer those. The Miami offense on fire. Joe Burrow with his tender calf going up against the uh, most generous pass defense, the Tennessee Titans. Can Justin Fields get on track this week? We're all wondering this. If he can't this week, when can he? King Henry, can he get on track this week? We will see. Can Zach Wilson get on track? Oh, damn. There I went. There I went and did it. Nah, probably not. Remember when I was hoping that, the, that, that there was somewhere where there was some possibility that Zach Wilson had gotten like somewhere near my quite level? not there yet work in progress work in progress uh taylor swift will be the game and maybe aaron Rodgers though so we'll have a lot of things to to check out there will be plenty of sideline shots during that game if the game is not great hey joe hey melissa hey kevin thanks for coming i appreciate everyone coming i really enjoy uh sitting here and chatting with you all and i see the questions are indeed piling up mr scampers how are you uh appreciate your attendance as always uh Great to see all my friends in here. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, great to see your questions, too. I guess we should uh, not screw around too much. Uh, was there anything I wanted to talk about? Was it Jameer Gibbs? I don't want to talk about Jameer Gibbs. Patience, people. <clears throat> Patience, right? Just hang tight. So, some, you know, some of the things I've been talking about recently are, you know, trying to, you know, get your head around how we win more in September. Maybe it's being more open to playing options who rise up uh, as opposed to your investments. It's really hard to stop playing your investments. 
But, but I want to talk a little bit about those investments. Not playing them does not mean abandoning them, right? You're not giving up hope. You've built your narrative over the course of the season. And I keep saying divorcing yourself from the narrative is the key to fantasy success. Well, accepting that the narrative you built is wrong in the moment is different than admitting it's wrong in general, right? I don't have, I'm not wrong until the season's over. <clears throat> but, you know, there comes a point where, I, you know, over the course of the season, I have to make adjustments based on the reality at hand. Right. So but but don't bail on your investments. I, I you know, I, I'm big on not hitting the panic button. I'm also big on acknowledging when things aren't going your way. There's a there, both things are possible. Right. You don't have to be trapped in a prison of one thing. Uh, you know, like this is a disaster. I've got to bail on this. Well, OK, it's a disaster in the moment, but you don't have to bail on it. You just have to patiently await for the things you projected to happen to show signs that they are happening. But Jameer Gibbs is a good player. Hey, Darren Waller is a good player. He has not done what I expected yet. <clears throat> but I see reasons for optimism in both cases. There are other players I see less reason. There are other players I see more reason. There's players like Cooper Cup, who you all know I was very high on. Hell, I want to see him on the field. Looks like he'll get on the practice field next week, by the way, folks. So that's good news there. We'll see what that does for the Puka Nakua's and Tutu Atwells of the world. I think they'll keep their roles. Van Jefferson, who? What the hell, Van Jefferson? Not, you know, not a complaint. It's like no one's paying top dollar for Van Jefferson, but it's interesting how these things play out, right? So we'll see what goes on there with him. And we'll also find out pretty soon what's going on with uh, uh, Jonathan Taylor. The latest reporting is he doesn't still doesn't want to play for the team, but the situation has calmed down. So will he get traded? Won't he get traded? We'll find out. He'll come off the list in the meantime. Keep playing Zach Moss. He's one of those players that has risen up. We'll help you cover for the poor showings of players you expected to do better. It's not a Jameer Gibbs. Yes, that was a Jameer Gibbs comment. I'm not going to lie. But Zach Moss is carrying me in a lot of leagues. I'm having a great deal of success uh, because Zach Moss, maybe Kyron Williams is doing the same for those of you who drafted Cam Akers and were quick to the trigger to get Kyron Williams. So players rise up all the time. We know this. Uh, it's something we have to be mindful of and churn and do all the things we need to do. And I hope we're all doing them. And as we head into October, I am expecting a little less volatility, a little more certainty. Matchups will start becoming more predictable or hopefully more predictable. And team offenses will start to catch up with the defenses, which they were up to this point. So there we go. Let's get into the questions. I know that's what you're here for. You don't want to just hear me prevaricate about things. Who didn't hit the like button? All right. Just, just be a jerk now. All right, let's go. Brian Larkin, is it time to consider dropping Drake London and picking up Marvin Mims? No. Perfect case in point. It is time to start picking up Marvin Mims. 100% true. Is it time to give up on Drake London? I mean, Drake London to me still, you know, I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks. Right now, he is a tough wide receiver to three decision. So would Marvin Mims be, right, at the moment. So, you know, like, do you see more upside in Marvin Mims? I can see that. So if, I mean, if that's your only choice, I can see that. Um, <clears throat> I'd be looking for other other avenues, other opportunities to pick up Marvin Mims and maybe drop something else. If you're carrying Brian, two defenses, two tight ends, two of something that's a onesie position that you can maybe stream a little more easily, I'd probably do that. Um, so, so, look, I'm not pleased with the... Atlanta pass offense. And I, and I don't know if it's going to course correct because we've been waiting for quite some time, <laughs> right? So, I mean, <clears throat> if you listen to the analytics people, they're still convinced the Kyle Pitts breakout is coming. I'm less convinced. And I'm less convinced that uh, that Drake London is going to to be a consistent weekly producer. So, and I, but, but, but the same problem is for me with Mims. The difference is for those, Brian, if you're trying to decide between the two, it's obvious. Marvin Mims has huge, big play upside. So, if that's if if you're not starting either of them at the moment, sure, I'd try to look for a way to keep London and 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 add Mims. Pedro made a huge mistake. Look, we I made a huge mistake. Did not play. I did actually. I didn't make a huge mistake. I'm lying. I'm totally lying. I did play David Montgomery. I feel really good about it. Made a huge mistake sitting Romeo Dubs Thursday. Might have to go with a member of the Chicago backfield. I need a flex and wide receiver one. One point PPR, Flowers, Will Garrett Wilson, Jerome Ford, Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson. Um, say Flowers, it's a tough matchup. I don't know if it's impenetrable, but it's not been good for quarterbacks. He'd probably be my lean here. I don't know that 
Jerome Ford has a greater matchup. Jerome Ford has not been very efficient, but he's gotten the touchdowns, right? So he's in play for that. Garrett Wilson, I think, for right now. I could dial back a little bit uh, and wait and see what happens. Wait and see if my hopes for Mr. Uh, Zach Wilson are just that or maybe more. I don't need to play that. Um, the great matchup for Herbert and Roshan Johnson. I wish you only had one of them, so it's hard to decide between the two. In a PPR, it seems like Roshan Johnson is gaining ground, but you know, we're talking about a defense that just gave up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins. The Bears are not the Miami Dolphins, but they're not necessarily not the Commanders who put up what 30s plus. So, <clears throat> so I don't think it's a, it's a tough matchup. I don't know if this defense is going to get right. I might go with I might go with one of those two backs. I'd probably lean Herbert, but I could make a strong case for Johnson. If not, if you're brave, Flowers is still it. Steve Lindor, Bob, hope all is well. Well, mostly, thank you. PPR League, one flex spot is uh, needed to decide out of these guys if Debo sits. Zay versus Browns, Brian Robinson versus Eagles, uh, Sky Moore versus Jets. So I want to say that uh, Debo's late afternoon, right? I want to say in the Browns. Is that an early game? Yeah, that's an early game. So you might have to decide that in advance. Um, <clears throat> don't like Ryan Robinson versus the Eagles. That one you'll have to decide in advance. So Sky Moore is the only realistic option if you want to wait out Debo because he's the Sunday night game. Uh, I'd probably go a different direction. Mike, uh, you know, Brian Robinson, it's, it's a tough game. He's been getting the volume. Zay, tough game. He's been getting the volume. Might be a slight lean to Zay for me in this one as, as a flex. Scott Kobe, would you go with Ramondre Stevenson against Dallas or Derrick Henry against Cincinnati in PPR League? My other back was David Montgomery. Probably leaning Henry here, Scott. I mean, you know, we're, we're counting at some point for him to, to get corrected, right? Um, I want to say Cincinnati kind of middle of the pack against the run. Uh, yeah, that's the direction I'm going to go. Pat's offense running a ton of plays. You guys see that? They're running a ton of plays. Jesse, need two. Swift, Mostert, Sanders, or Javante Williams. Do like the Javante Williams matchup. This, to me, is pretty easy at the moment. Swift and Mostert right now. Uh, Miles Sanders listed as questionable people. If you missed that, he's got a groin issue. Um, so Minnesota Vikings are easier to throw on than to run on. I don't know if... I don't know if... Um, I, does anyone else wish Andy Dalton was still playing this week? <laughs> this would be a great game. Uh, for Adam Thielen's revenge game. Thielen played well the week before with Bryce Young. So I'm hoping for, you know, again, really favorable matchup. I'd go, I'd go Derrick Henry. Or I'd go Swift to Mostert. I'm sorry. I like, got a lot of questions in my face. Swift, Mostert, in that order. And I, and I might play Javante Williams over Sanders just knowing he's going into the game not 100%. Hello, Robert. How are you? Hi, Tony. Stafford or Daniel Jones? I'm probably still going to play Daniel Jones. It's a really super favorable matchup for him. Um, the Colts getting a ton of sacks. I mean, boy, the the pass rush from Cincinnati just played havoc with that offense last week. I'm going to go ahead and go with Daniel Jones here based mostly on his rushing ability and the Seahawks being super generous as a defense. Steve Linder, PPR, need two running back spots out of these four. Najee Harris versus Houston. Brian Robinson versus Philadelphia. Rashad White. Oi. 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 Uh, so Mike Dempsey, my co-host on Sirius, thinks this is maybe a get-right game for Najee. I'm not so sure. I'd probably be playing. Uh, he's all, he's. I'd probably be playing. Uh, dude, I do not like. Do not like Rashad White. It's a, these are volume plays, where, where, right? I'm probably playing, I'm probably playing, I'm playing, I'll play Harris and Robinson. I want to play Rashad White. The volume has been huge, but the, the never, I'm trying to think of another running back who's done so little with so much uh, as Rashad White. And it's against New Orleans, who, you know, fairly tough defense. Gain well, I mean, until we get something sorted out or I see signs of life that he's gaining more ground on uh, DeAndre Swift. And it, I think it will happen, Steve, so don't let go of that. Those are the two. Um, <clears throat> boy, I play Najee Harris, and I don't feel good about it. I'm usually very supportive of the Harrises. Very supportive. I don't know why. Hi, Dame. How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Scott, what do you think of the Lions backfield? Why would some people be surprised uh, how it worked out? 
I don't know if I'm surprised at how it worked out. I, well, I'll tell you why they're surprised. They were told something else by the team itself. And there was ample evidence that not only did they have big plans, but they were putting a lot of effort into getting this guy. They had a lot of interest in getting him, not just the draft capital, but watch the behind the scene video. So I think there's a lot of reasons why people would think it's slow, but also a lot of reasons why you would see him slow roll dead. I don't know that I believe the Lions have drafted somebody else to be De DeAndre Swift. And I'm almost wondering if they don't like see the success of DeAndre Swift as a sign that they need a, to play DeAndre Swift more. And if they were going to do, if they, if that was the case, why don't they play Jameer Gibbs more? Look, Montgomery's getting the job done. That's, you know, uh, he's a serviceable player. I didn't think he was this high end, but we saw Jamal Williams fare really well in that role last year. It's a great offensive line. They've had some injuries. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you why. Why that's why people think are would be surprised at how it's worked out. They were told otherwise by the coaches who said they have big plans. I don't know that they don't still have big plans, and I don't know that Jameer Gibbs has not looked good when he's gotten his opportunities. He has, and he's still getting plenty of targets. So, like, it's not a disaster. It's just more Montgomery than we watched, we wanted, and I don't know that I'm surprised by it. Um, uh, we'll see how surprised I am when the season ends. Um, but I do think that, that over the course of time, we'll see a bit of adjustment if everyone stays healthy. And if ever, somebody gets hurt, then all bets are off. And that's maybe one of the reasons they've added some talent. Uh, uh, Jason Wilson, good morning, Bob. More upside this weekend in PPR. Gabe Davis versus Dolphins, DJ Moore versus, versus Denver, or Tank Dell versus Steelers. I think the upside is obviously in the matchup, probably, you know, just in general, you're thinking DJ Moore. Gabe Davis is like hit or miss. I think this is going to be a bit of a shootout. At least Vegas does. So Gabe Davis will be part of that. <clears throat> Tank Dell, 20 targets over the last two weeks has been phenomenal. Uh, the Steelers got a hell of a pass rush. They're not great at covering receivers, but they got a hell of a pass rush. Uh, CJ Stroud has been done really well at avoiding that kind of nonsense, the pass rush kind of nonsense. And... Uh, and, and doing it with that with offensive linemen who are who are down, right? Like and Larry Tunsil out again this week. I think he's been they've been like four linemen short. So that would be the concern for me with Tank Dell is just is this the week the pass rush tees off and and causes CJ Stroud some problems? I'd probably go DJ Moore uh, just based on that overall poor showing of the defense. I know Pat Sertan is there and he is a like a positive in that unit, but it's, they haven't stopped anybody. <clears throat> Andrea, I need one. Mostert versus Buffalo. James Conner versus San Francisco. Miles Sanders versus Minnesota. It's hard for me to sit Mostert at this point, and I love James Conner. I think I like him in the order you have him. Tough matchup for Conner. Miles Sanders questionable. I think that it sorts itself out. And if you're worried about De Devon A. Chan, I'll say his name right because he asked me to. Uh, you know, maybe there is legitimate worry. I, I still think you know there's the Mostert looks like the lead piece there. Uh, in that in that backfield for now, as while he's healthy. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. By the way, Buffalo not been great against the run this year, so we got that going for us, Andrea. Will Thompson, hi. Pickett or Daniel Jones? I'm still playing Daniel Jones, mostly because of the rushing ability, right? Just feel like that gives him that chance to give you a higher floor. And and against the Seahawks, I think I can I can uh, I can go that direction. Pat V wants to know who sits: Michael Thomas versus Tampa Bay. Uh, Sutton at Chicago, DJ Moore, Denver. Um, probably Michael Thomas, just with the quarterback uncertainty. It's not like, you know, Jameis Winston can't do anything. Just the uncertainty surrounding the situation as they prep. I mean, I do, I, I like all three. I think they're all three fine, but I think the, the Chicago-Denver matchup, two teams that have no interest in playing defense, is of interest to me. Thoughts on Puka's role and cup returns? Uh, so just it seems to be that, you know, he's not playing full time in the slot, which, you, you know, I, I think he'll continue to have a role. Like we saw last week, <clears throat> you know, against the Bengals with a good pass rush. It kind of was a limiting factor on everybody uh, and everyone is except Tutu Atwell. Apparently he was immune to that. Um, I think it's going to be a three way mix. I think Van Jefferson starting to look like the odd man out to me um, with uh We'll see, we'll see we'll see how fast cup gets back but but it will obviously you know cut back on the numbers right uh, if cooper cup is back and he is still cooper cup his 
target share is going to be lead the way easily. Might open things up, though, for better opportunities for Puka, even if there's fewer opportunities. So I think he'll still be a viable play, probably dial him back to a wide receiver three range until we get a little more information. But that would be my gut feeling at the moment. Steve wants to know, Keaton Mitchell, here he comes. So if you've been watching this uh, live stream over the course of time, you know Billy Musio, my friend over Player Profilers, big on him. I did their pod this week. We talked about him a little bit. Go check that out. Um, <clears throat> um, look, he's a little fast guy, right? Uh, so and I, I think uh, did, did Adam Schefter pick him up in a league somewhere, and that caused a big uh, stir? Look, we've been talking about him since before the start of the season. He is fast. He's like Devon A. Chain, except maybe smaller, maybe faster. I don't know. That's possible, uh, the faster portion. Um, although Raheem Moser says he's the fastest guy on that team. Fastest 40. But Keith Mitchell's maybe a good speculative play before people get caught up on him. Looks like Justice Hill will probably be back this week. They're elevating Melvin Gordon. So Mitchell coming off IR. So watch him. He's maybe a player to make a speculative addition on before the crowd gets in on it. Uh, hello, everybody. Happy to see you all here. Joe, Melissa, catching up here. Any word on Jeff Wilson Jr.'s return to Miami? I think he's started the season on IR, so he's about a week away. And we'll see. I mean, I, I feel like his role is going to be <clears throat> minimized until somebody, until unless somebody gets injured. Um, but he might cut in, you know, might get some fortuitous opportunities. Uh, but, but yes, he seems to be heading back. That's the, I haven't heard anything negative. Let's put it that way. Jeffrey C., PPR, need two, start two of these running backs. Kyron Williams versus Cole, Javante, and Henry. <clears throat> I'm going to play Kyron and Derrick Henry. They're all three good options, and I love that Javante Williams against the Bears matchup. Um, just like the other two a little better. 14 team, say no more. Nods as good as a wink to a blind horse, they say. 14 teams are tough, man. Need two of four. Pittman, Dell, Atwell, Thielen. Wow, those are all good options in a 14. Oh, my goodness. Playing Thielen and Pittman. Oh, my goodness. Hate leaving some of those guys on the bench. Should be able to get something for some of those guys in a 14-team or someone's hurting for something there. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> Jeffrey C., PPR, need to start two of these guys. DJ Moore versus Denver. Mike Evans versus Saints. Hopkins versus Cincinnati. Uh, Mike Evans, it's time for his annual brawl with Marshawn Lattimore. Um, those guys don't like each other. Um, DJ Moore, for sure. I want to say I'm playing Evans over Hopkins, even with that matchup. I am. I am. Evans has been super hot. I mean, uh, Hopkins is not. I know there's no Traylon Burks this week, people, by the way, in case you did not see that. Uh... Boy, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think we want to overplay the matchup in our mind. Uh, let me just take a look at something. Let me look before I say something silly and foolish and uh, underhanded. Let's see what we got here. Uh, the fight was the, the other, they had the fight last year. And week two. Uh, prior to that, Lattimore shadowed twice as a rookie, uh, three times, seven set lines. Five for 55, seven for 147. He's had some, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go with Evans. I just had to see what the numbers were. He's had some really lousy games, though, like it's a one for 14, one for three, but it was a touchdown. One for two, but it was a touchdown. I mean, the worst games he has, he tends to score touchdowns. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Boy, that's a tough call. Hey, I had to look that one over. Deshaun Watson gets Baltimore. Geno Smith against the Giants. Uh, Baltimore has been pretty tough. Deshaun Watson questionable. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and play it. I mean, you know, Scott, it's up to you. I mean, uh, you know, I think Geno Smith is perfectly viable. My concern would be the matchup. I do have Jackson down a fair amount in the rankings, just down closer to the uh, you know tail end of the top ten. Geno Smith is just outside the top 12. So, I mean, it's a great, it's a, it's a pretty favorable matchup against the Giants. If you have concerns, I think it's reasonable to have concerns about the shoulder and the matchup. I think Geno's a safer play. Let's 
see where I went here. I scrolled down too far. Oh, way too far. There's a lot of questions. All right. PPR question if Debo's out, Steve Linder wants to know. Need one of these Shahid versus Tampa Bay, Akers versus Carolina, Gibson versus Philadelphia, Josh Kelly versus Las Vegas. You know that Josh Kelly will get some volume and not too much with it. Uh, so if you just want the floor, maybe maybe Kelly. If you're shooting for the moon, it'd be Shahid. Zach Moss or Jerome Ford? Easy call for me, Zach Moss. He's been money. Jerome Ford has been super inefficient. Like, you know, average per carry has been horrible, but he's scoring touchdowns. Um, Baltimore not giving up a lot of those. So I, I, easy call for me, Jeffrey, Zach Moss. Ford or Madison? Probably going to go Madison here as well. I'd hope he can keep the momentum going. Uh, I don't think it's a horrible matchup against Carolina. I'm worried about Cam Akers a little bit, but not that much yet. Andrea needs one. Rashad White versus New Orleans. H. Han versus Buffalo. Charbonnet versus New York Giants, half point PPR. If you just need the floor, Andrea, this is easy call. Go white. The, the volume is there. Even if the great production is not, you're, you know, he's going to have the ball in his hands. Uh, you know, if they were interested in benching him for somebody, they already would have because he's been not super productive and they just keep feeding him. And I think they're, they believe in him. H hand is the upside play. Good morning, Albert. Pedro, thoughts on holding on to Dotson? I could have dropped him and picked up Josh Downs. Thoughts? Boy. <clears throat> If they can't figure out the pass protection, it's going to be tough sledding, right? I mean, Sam Howell's been sacked, what, 19 times? That's a limiting factor, people. That's what I'm – hashtag analysis. Limiting factor. Super huge pass rushes. Um, uh, so I'd like to hold on to Dotson because, I mean, I kind of believe that he's a really good player. Uh, Josh Downs is rising, but he's still, you know, down the tree a little bit. Um, again, I'd be trying to find ways to get both. Mm. I don't know that I give up thoughts and for downs at the moment. I'm still a little bit, I'm still a little bit invested, maybe too much. So should I be letting go of that? Hasn't been good people. I'm probably, I probably stand a pat. Let's see. Would you trade away Anthony Richardson and Mims for Spears? Elijah Moore and Daniel Jones. I have Derrick Henry and Hurts. Would love to hear your thoughts. I'm not trading away Anthony Richardson. I mean, that's, you know, that's some nice, decent pieces coming back. But, I mean, uh, Spears is the handcuff. You're getting Elijah Moore, who, you know, at best is a wide receiver three for you. And Daniel Jones, who's a viable weekly starter. But, I, uh, you know, Richardson, if the, if, the, if, the, if the injury concerns are an issue for you, sure. I'm sticking with the bigger play threats. I'm sticking with Richardson and Mims myself. Oh, you're never playing. You have Hurts. I'm sorry. You're never, you're never playing them. Yeah, I might do this. Need one. Madison Mixon or Swift? Uh, Swift, Madison Mixon in that order this week. How about those Lions, says Robert Farron. Okay. Pretty damn good. Tootsie Pop, thank you for making it. Happy birthday, Grayson. Thanks for stopping by. Happy, uh, happy to have you here on your birthday. That's fantastic. 12 years old. Oh, my gosh. Football is a thing for you. I like that. Hi, Bob. Wanted to find a way to start Marvin Mims, would it, but it would have to be over DJ Moore as wide receiver three as reflexes to over James Conner. Any chance he gets increased staffs? I mean, I think there's a chance. He's a great playmaker. And at some point, Sean Payton needs to find ways to get him on the field more. But is he really going to play ahead of Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy? I don't know that he is. I think, you know, I think more, uh, you know, I, I think he needs to see more time to Brandon Johnson and a little Jordan Humphrey. And yeah, but but that's the conundrum, right? They They don't seem to, you know, they seem to be uh, – those other two guys are definitely ahead of them. I probably would not unless I'm, like, needing a huge home run swing. And then I would play him ahead of Connor, who I think is, you know, tough matchup this week. But, man, he's been he's been playing pretty damn good. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, Mike Levine, morning, Bob. The rank these Goodwin, Pickens, London. I think I'm going to go Pickens – I think I'm going to go Pickens, Godwin, London. Let me just check and make sure I'm not crazy. Yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. That wasn't as hard as I thought. Thank you for that question. Uh, Lamb or Pickens? I'll play Lamb. 
Yes, everyone put the happy birthday wishes in for Grayson. By the way, I'm Bob Harris. If you're just tuning in, wondering what the hell's going on here, why we're all here, and what the hell we're doing. We're answering questions. We're talking about fantasy football. We're having a good time. I hope you're enjoying yourself, everyone who's here. Hit the like button if you are. Hit the dislike button if you aren't. Let me know. What am I doing wrong? Tell me in the chat. What am I not doing that you want me to do? I'd be interested to hear that. Or give me more questions, and I will continue to answer them. Uh, we're here every Saturday at noon Eastern time. Do this for an hour. We're here every Wednesday uh, with a guest. Do that for an hour. Last show was with Lindsey Rhodes. Check that out. Great show. Mike Dempsey the week before. <clears throat> My Sirius XM radio co-hosts and colleagues, uh, both of them. Um, Dempsey and I will be on tonight from 8 to 11 on NFL radio, the Football Diehards program. Also simulcast on the Fantasy Channel. You hardly can't miss it. Three hours of goodness coming up. We'll have Pat Fitzmorris from Fantasy Pros on as a guest. We'll cover our game of the week and have all kinds of good times. Uh, usually uh, during the week, you will hear us on Football Diehards as well. Monday, Thursday, and Friday, 10 p.m. We do three hours on Monday and Thursday. We do two hours on Friday night, all calls, and the one and done draft. Ton of fun. Uh, so check that out. Go to the footballdiehards.com website. It's really good. Tons of great content there. Brad Cruz is a sit star. Great high stakes player. Uh, puts out his sit-star columns in advance, does one for Thursday, does one for the Sunday games. Also, tons of DFS content for myself, John Lobb, Gary Davenport does his shadow coverage, Casey Joyner with his blue weight rated whiteouts, the great Jamie Calandro with his DFS content, Justin Lanero. And early in the week, we have all kinds of uh, waiver wire content, Evan Tarciano's waiver wizard, uh, Joe Kalana's early injury report and waiver wire, Matthew Sharon's dollar store free agents. Uh, and don't forget Reginald James uh, with his commissioner articles. They're super entertaining, super cool. I'm not even commissioner, and I love those articles. So, yeah, that. There we go. Plug. I feel plugged. Um, let's see. I'm getting end of the line vibes from King Henry as Titans prepare to rebuild. I don't know if. So I think we've felt like this before, Joe. We'll see. I mean, you may end up being right, but I, I feel like there have been times where Henry has had lulls, and then he comes out firing this may be a game where he comes out firing i'm hoping that is Debo playing this week if i'm having to guess right now andrea i think no he hasn't practiced they've been really cautious with him he's a super tough dude uh, but i'm concerned about it but they're also down juan jennings so maybe they try to get him in there we'll see wrong in the moment versus wrong in general i'm thinking Najee harris is the latter very very possible pat v um you remember there was a lot of talk uh, this Summer, you know, I want to say Dan Graziano from ESPN uh, put out that, you know, this may be the year that Jalen Warren moves ahead. And I know Dale Lawley from the team's website wasn't buying that. And Dale's a pretty sharp guy, been around a long time, knows his fantasy stuff too. And so I kind of bought into that. But clearly you see, you know, Jalen Warren on the field. He looks much better. But I wonder how much of it is play calling and just like, just seems like they're asking Najee Harris to do things that maybe aren't in his wheelhouse, you know, these hitting the edge and maybe, maybe pound him up the middle a little bit would be okay. So, but you're not, I, 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 I agree in, in principle there, uh, Pat V. At the moment, it looks wrong in general. Didn't buy a lot of them this summer. For that reason, I wasn't sure. The Tootsie Pop says, in a guillotine flex, Zeke, CEH, or Boyd? I'm aware they are crazy. Says, I bet you are. I might, you know, I might try to catch lightning about Zeke. You know, again, the Patriots are getting a ton of volume, play volume, right? They're running fast. They're getting a lot of plays in. I might go that direction. I think Boyd is probably the the safer play in this matchup against uh, in a PPR. Uh, you know, Boyd would be the safer floor play. But I'd be tempted to play Zeke in the revenge game. Need one, Swift, James Cook, or Ford. Boy, I could make a pretty good – you could make an argument for Cook. I'm going to make it for Swift. Jesse. Hi, Brian Baker. Need to start two out of three in PPR. Nico Collins against Pittsburgh. Jacoby Myers against the Chargers. George and Anderson versus the Panthers. Or George Pickens against Houston. Impossible for me. Sit Pickens. Boy, uh, the Jacoby Myers, uh, if I knew for sure uh, Jimmy Garoppolo was playing, I'd do that. So what? The, the Nico Collins, is that a late game? That's an early game. Addison's the last guy in the list. So... <clears throat> mm. Mm -mm. Well, watch today. I'll have news probably on the website at some point about Garoppolo. I'm guessing they will have a session today where 
he gets on the field and then they test him and maybe we or look, we hear something about Clarence. If you hear Jimmy Garoppolo is cleared, I want to play Jacoby Myers. Target share has been huge, matchup super favorable. <clears throat> and if not, I I would probably go Nico Collins. Last week was not good. I know it's a tough matchup too. I mentioned the pass rush for Pittsburgh might be tough, um, but they're throwing the ball a hell of a lot. So by the way, are the Vikings? Uh, I want to say what are the the, the routes run have been ridiculous, right? What do I got here? <clears throat> There's a number out there. Uh, Kyle, our buddy, former football diehards colleague Kyle Devorchek put out there: the Vikings receivers rank first, second, eleventh in total routes run. Jefferson is first. KJ Osborne is eleventh or second, and Jordan Addison is third. He's running around on seventy-five percent of Cousins' dropbacks, uh, but with how often the Vikings are throwing, it doesn't. <laughs> he's still top ten in routes. So. Uh, that passing offense is fantastic. Ah. I'm probably going the direction I said uh, and, and waiting to hear, waiting as long as I can to hear a word on Garoppolo. Mike Levine need two running backs, full PPR. Zach Moss versus Rams, Kamara versus Tampa Bay, Ford versus Baltimore, Warren versus Houston. Zach Moss for sure is one. I'm tempted to get Kamara into lineups. So, you know, if you're a little worried and you feel like he might get slow rolled a little bit, I would default probably. I probably like Warren a little better than Ford this week. Brian Baker, two out of those four. Yeah, I got you. I had two. So let's see, Pop. Does Grayson have questions? It's his birthday. I'd like to answer if he has one. Ask me anything. Ask me how my cats are doing. Standard league, need one flex, Javante Williams, I look or Dell. Standard league, I might go, this might be the week I go with Javante Williams. If not, I, if, so we got, uh, you got no fallbacks. Uh, I look's cleared. I would probably, you know, I look seems like a safe play. I do like Javante Williams this week, but I think I look's probably the smarter play. Michael Mayer, 50% of snaps so far, catch so far, catch two yards, too soon to panic in Dynasty Leagues. Yes, in Dynasty Leagues, way too soon to panic. Look, it hasn't been ideal. No one's pretending that. This is a very concentrated, funneled uh, set of targets, and that's one of the reasons why I'm eager to play Jacoby Myers. It's been Devontae Adams and uh, Jacoby Myers. I want to say, too, I, you know, whatever you think about Jimmy G, and, you know, there's all kinds of opinions out there on him, he has shown a great willingness to throw the ball to Devontae Adams no matter what, right? I mean, covered, double covered, tight spaces. He doesn't care. He knows what he's doing. And But Jacoby Myers has kind of fallen into that category too. He's, these guys are just getting tons of looks. It's been impressive. Probably have the numbers up here. Hmm. Let's see. Myers getting double digit targets each of the two games he's played. Hard for me to back off him. But anyway, I I uh, I I think for for the purpose of your question, wait, you know, dynasty one year is nothing, especially for tight ends. Mims or Sky PPR, I'm playing Mims, Alex. Like the big play, Billy. Like like the big playability a little bit more with him. Love the matchup this week. Just struggling with his Chiefs uh, passing attack. I think more has been serviceable, but it's hard to hard to find one. I'm 0-3 and messed up picking Gibbs. You're 0-3. I don't know that you messed up picking Gibbs yet, uh, but you need to get to 1-3 and this week for sure. I hope that Gibbs wasn't a part of that. Um, I'm sorry, little Josh. It's tough. If you have a specific question, let me know. We'll help you sort through it, man, if you need uh, roster moves or whatever. Morning, Ross Lade. Thanks for coming. Hey, Toronto, Dave. Nice to see you. Mike Levine on DraftKings, Damian Pierce or Warren? Uh, Warren for me. Good morning, Bob. Great to see you. Great to see you, Victor. Thanks for coming. Appreciate appreciate you all coming, man. This is fantastic for me. Gives me a chance. You know, I'm sitting here hauling ass all day, uh, cranking out content at the footballdiehards.com website. I get a little bit in my head, you know, and I'm like narrow my focus. These uh, hours give me an opportunity to sit here and, and think about what I've been thinking about, right? And, and you know, sometimes you sit there and you're writing to yourself and you're putting these articles out and then, you know, you talk through them and you start to see things a little different. So this is super helpful for me and I hope it's uh, somewhat helpful for you as well. Uh, my own personal therapy sessions with my 
multiple therapists. You're doing great work, people. Send me the bill. Uh, rest of season. Damian Pierce or Jerome Ford? It just doesn't look like it's happened for Damian Pierce, right? This seems like it's a way past heavier offense. I mean, at some point, do they correct that in general? I don't know why they would. I'm probably going with Ford. I mean, it hasn't been great. The efficiency has not been better there, but the touchdowns have. Damian Pierce isn't, it's just not, I should, I should look more closely. Let me just look. I just like, you know, just in general, just my, my, my gut reaction to this is not, is, is Jerome Ford. And I realize he's been like, not impressive in terms of the yards per carry. He's pretty good offensive line. All those things are true. Yeah, year to date is like ridiculous. I'm going to see this what Pierce has been doing weekly. You know, Pierce is probably better than I thought, but he's still not good. I mean, it's just not great. I'm going to probably go with Ford and take my chances there. Because I think, you know, here, here, there's this, right? Like if we're looking for looking for little positives to help me hang my hat there. I mean, the, the Ravens or the, the Browns had a choice, right, at some point. They chose Ford over Hunt, right? I realize Hunt is back and circumstances can alter the way they see things and, you know, injuries, et cetera, performance as well. But this is a new coaching staff in Houston. They seem to be running things differently than we saw last year where Damian Pierce was the focal point of that offense for as long as he was healthy. He's just not. C.J. Stroud is. Victor Jones, I hope that helps you. Dame, half point PPR, Miles Sanders versus Minnesota, Hollywood versus San Francisco, or Addison versus Carolina. It'd probably be Sanders if he plays. The Brown, uh, Marquise is a late afternoon game, and you're going to have to sort that out. Yes, I'm looking at things, trying to sort it out of my own mind. I mean, in a, in a vacuum, I would play Brown. Right, uh, you know, over, over, uh, over Addison. I don't know that we're in a vacuum though. I'm probably going to go ahead and play Sanders if he's active, Dame, and and then and and I would probably I, I think Hollywood's going to play. It's two limited practices. He hurt his thumb in practice, and then on Thursday, and then made it back on the field Friday. So my guess is he's going to play. But let's get listen to this, Dame. Here's my here's my always my easy out. Listen to me on the radio. Listen to the Football Diehards program or the Sirius XM pregame show if you can. If not, check the website. Um, and, and I'll have something on Sanders overnight for sure. If he's likely to play, I'd probably play that. Or And, and if I don't feel good about that, I want to play Hollywood. Panthers fan, I wish Andy was playing. I do too. <laughs> That's a Scott Fishbowl comment. Jesse, you need one. Miles Sanders is playing. Ayuk if Debo sits. I play Ayuk if Debo doesn't sit. And I like Javante Williams this week, too. I mean, I, I mean, I think you can make good cases. I, I dial back on Sanders just for the fact that he is questionable. It's a groin issue. Uh, it's easy to throw the ball. Ah, a lot of reasons. And probably a slight lean to Ayuk over, over Javante. Let me just check that. Let me see what the algorithm thinks. It's very smart. <laughs> They're 32 and 33 on our flex rankings. Footballdiehards.com, we have flex rankings to help you sort these things out. So um, the algorithm says coin toss, basically. They, we rank them consecutively. I like Ayuk in the matchup a little better. I love Javante in the matchup as well. Um, I... I'm an Ayuk guy. I think probably Javante Williams is a safer play. He's getting good enough uh, volume and it's a great matchup. Weekly gross dynasty running back question. Josh Kelly versus Las Vegas. CEH versus Jets. Bigsby versus Atlanta. Josh Kelly is the answer. Dang. You do this. Mitch. Uh, good to see you, man. My Joe pros and with Joe's uh, partner, uh, Mitch Zimmer. We, had, uh, we played Montgomery. We're feeling pretty good. Happy Saturday. Who sits? Najee, Harris, Madison, Connor, or Mostert? Uh, probably Najee out of that group for me. Would you drop? Hey, I know that sounds horrible. I feel like uh, I owe the Harris's more. Would I drop Njoku for Ferguson in a pull of PPR? I would not. I mean, you know, it's almost as David Njoku falling into streaming tight end category. Is that where we're at? I mean, Ferguson gets volume. 
And the Cowboys getting tons of red zone action. They're just not doing anything with it. Great article up on Football Diehards that I put out just this morning about that very topic. I mean, it's just not been great for Njoku. I could probably do that. I think Njoku at the moment has fallen into streaming category for me. Dame, I'd have to play two of those if Miles Sanders misses. Yes. I'd almost like it. To, uh, I would I would almost like to have to play two of those. If it's both, if it's the Hollywood and Addison thing. Scott, Mike Evans versus Saints, Tyler Lockett versus Giants, Michael Thomas versus Tampa. Need one in PPR. I'm probably playing Lockett in that case. It's the matchup and it's Lockett. It's well, no, it's Mike Evans matchup, but I also like Lockett. Wait, my Broncos, KJ Hamler joins the Colts practice squad. Lost Chubb can't make a trade. Start Latavius, Elijah Mitchell, or Dalvin. I'm probably starting Dalvin there. You could make an argument for Latavius. Uh, Elijah is questionable. Turned up on the injury report late this week, so that that's a concern. Great news for CMC managers, though. Uh, Gabe Tank or Garrett Wilson? Who sits? Why are you going to make me play Gabe Wilson, Gabe Davis over Garrett Wilson, Steve? That's like a horrible thing to do to somebody. So I've talked all year about not, you know, not letting less than ideal quarterback situations scare you off good wide receivers. This might be less than less than ideal. It is at the moment. I mean, it just is, right? They might have to throw the ball a hell of a lot or try to play keep up in this game, maybe. <sighs> I'm going to double check my work on this one. Hmm. I'm probably playing Wilson and Tank Dell because they're getting the targets every week. Gabe, I mean, if Gabe has a big game, it's great. It's just so, so up and down, Steve. If you're looking for that swing for the fence play, it's probably Gabe. Tank's gotten like 20 targets over the last two games. Mark Spafford wants to know who I think is better the rest of the way, Tyler Lockett or Terry McLaurin. Those are the my best officers for Rashid White. Um, I prefer Lockett. I prefer the offense. I love Terry McLaurin. That offense needs to figure out their pass protection. Need a running back while Eckler is out, says Ed H. Charbonnet. Harris. Damien Harris. Samaji P. Ryan, the struggle is real. I'd probably go Charbonnet. Pat V, PPR, Jerome Ford, Baltimore, greater than Michael Thomas, Tampa Bay at Flex. I don't know. Maybe. Um, hmm. The quarterback uncertainty is the only real question, right? It, for New Orleans. I, I, I don't like Ford's matchup, right? I just don't like the Baltimore... Defense. I don't like. I don't like either offense that much in this matchup. Maybe like almost guarantees a huge offensive explosion, right? I'm probably playing Ford, just to say for anticipated volume, but I don't have high expectations for the output. Uh, half point PPR. I'm going to try and go a little faster so I get through everybody's questions. Thank you so much for giving me the questions. Again, really appreciate this. I hope that it's helpful for you like it is for me. Half point uh, PPR and five point bonus to plays of more than 40 yards. Need to start two at flex. Gabe Davis, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Javante Williams. Javante Williams isn't going to give you many of those bonus plays, but I probably like him an awful lot. I'm probably playing Dell over and That's a tough call, Nico or Dell. I mean, Nico is the wide receiver one there. Uh, Dell has been putting up the wide receiver one numbers. The smart money says Nico Collins. Maybe it's avoid both of them. <clears throat> Damn it. I wish they were either easier questions. Um, I'll just go away and say Gabe Davis. Javante Williams, Gabe Davis. I, I can't decide between Nico and Tank Dell. Chris Olave versus Tampa or Devontae Smith versus Washington. 
I'm probably going to lean Chris Olave. He's been super consistent no matter who the quarterback is. And I think, you know, Jameis Winston willing to air it out. Scott Miller, appreciate you coming, Scott. I uh, need two in a full PPR, Javante, Kyron, or Drew Ford. I'd probably go Javante and Kyron. I would like Mr. more death penalty. <clears throat> I love my virtual desk. Thank you, Scampers. It's a good reminder. I haven't pounded a lot this morning. I haven't been, like, super excited about things. I've been working through the questions. It's been very business-like today. What the hell's the matter with me? I'm not going to have that. Urgh. Thank you, Mr. Scampers. I appreciate the input. I have a Amari Cooper, Jerome Ford, and Flowers. I believe I'm going to need one of the two to score. Probably so. And, like, like scores are possible, but these defenses are very stingy. Fields or Richardson? I'm probably still playing Richardson. I love... I mean, I, you know, if you can't play Fields this week, the question is, when can you play him? Well, probably when you have Richardson. Um, I think, like, I, I want to tell myself it's going to be Fields, right? I really do. But I think it's going to be, I think Richardson is a safer play. I mean, I think Fields, I mean, we're putting a lot in this matchup. We think it's great. Every quarterback who has played against Denver has, including Sam Howell, has put up big numbers. So I would not blame you for playing Fields this week, Pedro. You have permission. I'm still playing Richardson because I'm all in on Richardson. Um, but, I, but I've been saying all week, if you can't play Fields this week, you can't play him. Ever. Huh. That seems harsh. It's like I sentenced somebody there. I'm like the judge. Boom. Pound the table on that. Um, PPR. Rashad White or Gabe Davis? Probably playing Rashad White for the floor. If you're swinging for the fence, Lawman 22. Gabe Davis is swing for the fence because Rashad White is not. 10-team home league PPR. Would this trade be fair? Tua, Kamara, Diggs for Burrow, Pollard, Cup? Yeah. Kevin? I mean, I don't think it's unfair. I don't know which side I'd want to be on. I'd have to think about that, but I'm all in on Tua. But yeah, that's fair. Totally fair. I guess slight lean to the second half. I, I'd probably lean, my love for two and notwithstanding, I'd probably leave the Burrow Pollard Cup side. What are your lead on the Jonathan Taylor situation, how it plays out? I think, like, I generally I want to think that, the you know, the, 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 the trades and, you know, the things not working out tend to be the outliers. They get all our attention and draw all our focus. They don't tend to be the usual outcome. This one seems like has been off the charts all, the, all along. Um, again, I read a piece by Jeremy Fowler and Dan Graziano from ESPN who kind of argued this point. Fowler doesn't think they will trade him, doesn't think there'll be the market out there. And I think in the end, that's going to be the issue is who wants to pay for him and then pay him. It's going to be a problem. The Rams have been mentioned. I think they've done this before, paying running backs like Todd Gurley. I don't know. I think the Rams would be done playing for people, paying for people. They're not sure about it. I don't know. Thanks, Bob. Would you go with DJ Moore over Ayuk? I don't know. I would go with Ayuk, Jim. How do you think Kamara does in his first start back? I think it's going to be a full load. I mean, I, I, you know, that's my th feeling. And I, I, I'm not starting him over Moss, though. I'm not going that far. I might start him over Javante. Yeah, I'd probably start him over... We rank him. It's really close. I'm probably still starting him. I'm probably starting him Moss and Kamara in this one, but it's really close with Javante. I really love Javante. I would like to play him more, and this is a great week to play him. Um, but I, I think those other two plays are better. Kamara better. Robert Farrick, half point PBR, 12 team. I have Keenan Allen versus Las Vegas, Kirk versus Atlanta, Atwell versus Indianapolis as starters. Madison versus Carolina, Palmer versus Las Vegas. Would you change any of your starters for bench guys? I think it should be a big, like, get right game. Like, they're going to do everything they can. We've seen this, like, they're you know, getting Higgins back into play. Horrible game last week. Um, I think you probably have the right guys. Thoughts on Gibbs? All in all, I think is a minimum legit. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, kind of kick this around, Pedro. I'm not giving up on Gibbs. Probably a flex level play at best. Uh, but it's like, because it's been disappointing, doesn't mean it's been zero, right? And I think that's where we get our mind into. He does have a role. He's getting targets. You know, if I'd be looking for better options week to week until he establishes himself more or, you know, earns a greater share of the of the workload. Uh, but I think that's a fair assessment, Pedro. I made a mistake on bidding for Palmer with Allen on my roster. Would you ever play both or should I move one? Um, I could play both. Um, but, I, you know, Allen is obviously the preferred. Allen's the one that would get you a lot back, but I don't know that I want to move on from him. 
Palmer, you might be able to sell right now because people are going to be interested as his wide receiver too. Might try that. Andrea, I need a flex. Rashid Rice versus New York Jets. Shahid versus Tampa. Matt Breida versus Seattle. Half point PPR. We're not going to know about, you know, if we had clarity right now, if Saquon Barkley was ruled out, I'd probably play Matt Breida given the matchup and the volume. He had like 80 plus percent of the snaps last week. Um, Shahid's running routes a lot. Just he's been totally hit or miss. Rushy Rice is can't see. Eh, eh. I I probably take a chance on Shahid. Any cats? Cats are not on set. One of them's up on the landing. One of them's outside. They have not joined the show today. It's very disappointing, Scott. Shame on them. <laughs> Thank you for asking. KJ Frederick, Zeke, Tyler, Algier, Gus Bus, or Zach Charbonnet, full PPR. Probably playing Algier on that one. Ryan Baker, Zach Moss, Brian Robinson, or Jesse James Connors. Probably Zach Moss for me in this one. Still got another week before things come out. Pierce or Warren? Warren, Warren. Yes, that's Warren. Yes, you, I know you like that, Pedro. That's why I said it. Hey, Remy, thanks for coming. More birthday wishes for Grayson. So nice for Grayson to attend on his birthday. I, I would suggest we all sing, but since only I can sing, uh, probably that's not the best call. But I would sing if Grayson said sing. If you made me sing, I would sing. Happy birthday to you. There. Just in case. PPR, need two. Miles Sanders, Higgins, Pickens, Javante Williams. Um, Gerardo, this is a tough one. Uh, you know, my my initial thought is both those wide receivers, but I do like Javante Williams an awful lot this week. Um, and Sanders, I would like to just find if he was 100% healthy. And maybe this thing is nothing, you know, maybe the groin is nothing, but, but just that uncertainty is enough to maybe push me off a little bit. If we hear more, maybe I would change my uh, tune a little bit because um, I do like where he's at and I like his role. I, I'm probably going with the two wide receivers over Javante Williams, so I like an awful lot. So does JT get traded when he's healthy considering Moss has shown? I mean, uh, so, you know, I think I kind of answered this already, but I mean, I, the market is going to determine this, right? And, and that's been my question all along. Who wants to pay for him and pay him? I don't know if any team, I, I don't think the, the, I think the Dolphins maybe would have at one point, but I don't think they see that same need now. I've heard the Rams are interested. Maybe Cleveland would be interested, but they want to pay for him and pay him. I don't know. Doesn't hurt your hand to pound. That hurts badly. Ow! Pretty big underdog is Scott Fishbowl. Need upside boy versus Tennessee, Hollywood versus San Francisco, or P. Ryan versus Chicago. Hollywood's the big upside play. That doesn't give you any fallbacks, campers. Doesn't give you any fallbacks. I've got a couple minutes left. Let me get through the rest of these. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you coming. Zach Moss from Andre. Zach Moss. Thank you, Scott. And you have a heavy metal birthday songs. They are out there on the interwebs. I've seen them. Thanks, JR. I appreciate you. All right, everybody. I made it through all the questions. Um, I'm Bob Harris. I appreciate you coming. Man, great hour. I love spending it with you all. Love answering your questions. Uh, don't know that I answer them. I just talk about them and kind of hope that it helps you uh, kind of think through and consolidate your thoughts and, and help you either confirm the direction you're going or maybe open your mind to some other possibilities that are that turn out to be really useful. These are your teams. I'm not there on Monday. You can't kick me in the ass. You're the one, you're the only one you can point your finger at, right? Oh, I see one more question I missed. Khalil Herbert droppable at this point? Uh, I don't know that he's droppable, but I do agree with you uh, on the other two points. Uh, Chicago's offense is a mess and Roshan. I would probably, if only if I was desperate to churn, but I can't imagine finding a lot of better players on the waiver wire. But yes, generally agree with you. Um, anyway, appreciate you all. Um, Football Die Hard, the radio program tonight, 8 to 11 on Sirius XM, NFL Radio, and Fantasy Sports Radio. Tomorrow on the pregame show, Emil says hello to everybody. Uh, pregame show with Jeff Manns from 11 to 1. We'll have a great time there. Monday, Thursday, and Friday, Football Die Hards on Sirius XM, Fantasy Sports Radio. Wednesday! Here in this same spot, 7 p.m. Eastern Time next Saturday, I'll be back. We're moving the DFS lineup show to Saturday nights. We're, we were off this week, but we'll move that to Saturday nights going forward. FootballDieHards.com is the website. Promo code DieHards, 15% off everything you want. Uh, Jeffrey, Dame, Kevin, Scampers, everybody. You're all wonderful. I love you all.